800 w- It's a Scott Sloan Show, Monday morning here at News Radio 700 WLW. So, we'll continue to follow what's uh, going on coal rain, too, and uh, some of the marches over the weekend. I wanted to get this in, though, too. Uh, so a number of cities are moving towards a $15 hour minimum wage. You've heard about this, right? In an effort to create, I guess it's fairness is what this is. Um, and, and there's a proposal here. It may very well wind up on the ballot in Cincinnati this November in the fall. Uh, cities around the state, like Cleveland, for example, they've already announced plans to put a $15 an hour minimum wage on the ballot. So this is going to be an issue across the state as well as we head towards the fall. Now, a couple of years ago, uh, we were on vacation. We were in Frisco. And, um, it, it, you know, we weren't staying at the most expensive hotel. As a matter of fact, um, we had breakfast at Denny's. Now, normally you go to Denny's to get the Grand Slam breakfast, whatever it is, right? The three eggs, toast, a little bit. It's like seven, eight bucks. Um, I, I had an omelet. My wife had oatmeal and fruit, and uh, we each had a coffee. So oh, uh, omelet, oatmeal, fruit, two coffees. How much would that cost you at Denny's? Like a nickel, right? Maybe 10 bucks. $37 plus tip. <laughs> that was in Frisco. And they're an early adopter of the $15 minimum wage, and uh, now as an end result is, well, guess what? People aren't eating out as much, and when you don't eat out as much, what happens? People wind up losing their jobs. Joining me on News Radio 700 WLW to talk about the impact of the $15 minimum wage is Mark Bowser. He's the president of Empowering Enterprises. He's a corporate trainer. And uh, Mark, here in Cincinnati and in Cleveland and elsewhere on the Buckeye State, uh, voters this fall may be deciding on whether or not to have a $15 minimum wage. Based on what's happening in Frisco and elsewhere, I- I'm guessing that's a bad idea. I, I agree, Scott, that it is a very bad idea because people don't understand how the economy works. And, and you mentioned Frisco and your $37 breakfast at a Denny's. And what's happening in Frisco right now, they are one of the earlier adapters to California's law of moving up towards the $15 per hour wage. And what, what's happening there is we're seeing restaurants begin to die off. They are laying off workers. They are laying off busboys, cashiers, and so forth. And that's going to happen here in Ohio and across the nation as well. And because what happens is people think that they can bring their need to the marketplace, mm-hmm. and that will provide. Uh, the late Jim Rohn, who was uh, known as America's foremost business philosopher, he said, don't bring your need to the marketplace, bring your skill. And, and what that means is this, is if you are bringing $8 value to the marketplace an hour, you can't expect to get paid $15 an hour. If you're bringing $20 or $25 value to the marketplace, then, yeah, you can expect a, a good $12 to $15 wage. Right. But what happens if you don't have that value to the marketplace? We see what's happening in Frisco. They're laying off jobs. Restaurants are dying who can't compete. And the ones who can't compete are the ones like the Denny's, the chain restaurants. Because if it's just a California-based restaurant or even just a San Francisco-based restaurant and it is not a chain, well, then they just raise their prices and they know that their competitors have to do the same thing. But a Denny's or a McDonald's, they can't do that. Or they are risking going out of business. Because if you're going to pay $37 for your breakfast at Denny's in San Francisco and you pay $15 here in Cincinnati – well, guess what's going to happen to that Denny's in California? Yeah, it was ridiculous. I'd look at the menu going, why, why is it like $20 for an omelet? What the hell's going on here? But then you th- and this is even, they weren't even at $15 when we went. Um, at the time, they were nearing this. I mean, example would be Seattle. Uh, last year, they moved their minimum wage from 11 bucks an hour to 13 for large employers. And now they're finding out that uh, there's all these job losses to the point where uh, the, those workers are now earning $125 less a month as a result of these policies. Oh, absolutely. And and according to the Heritage Foundation, they say that employers are going to respond in four ways. And obviously, we're already beginning to see it. They say, one, they're going to see jobs cut or hours are going to cut. Somebody who has a 40-hour work week, they're automatically going to go down to a 25-hour work week because the employer cannot can't afford it. The second thing that's going to happen is they're going to raise prices, which is what you experienced at that Denny's in California. The third thing is technology. Technology. In fact, Ed Rincey, and he's a guy we all need to listen to. Ed Rincey is the former president and CEO of McDonald's USA. So not, not a, not a small fry, if you will, in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. He, he said 
that he expects if this continues to happen is what's going to happen in the fast food industry, his industry, is they're going to replace the human cashiers with kiosks. And we're already seeing it. I yeah. travel all over the country, and in a lot of the airports I go to, I'm not talking to a person. I'm talking to a machine, mm-hmm. and then I go pick up my food. Yep. And yep. there goes the job. There goes the job, and that's a huge problem. And then the fourth thing the Heritage Foundation says is we're going to see companies beginning to move out of the state or out of the country. And we're seeing that already. A lot of companies are moving down to Texas or they're moving out of the country. And what's going to happen is you're going to see, in fact, it is happening. Texas is going to be a boom town, and places like California is going to continue to struggle. Places like New York, in fact, those two states right there, and most people don't aren't aware of this. Those two states are close to bankruptcy, and guess who's going to pay that bill? Well, <laughs> you and me, right, you and me, Scott. Of course it is. Yeah, so, of course. So I'm not interested in paying for California's stupidity, and I don't want us to do the same thing here in Ohio. Because I, I live in Ohio. I live right up the road from you, Scott. Yeah. And we cannot afford to have that happen here in Ohio. So people in Cleveland, if you're hearing us today or here in Cincinnati, you've got to vote that out when it comes on the ballot. Well, if you look at where it's, it's failing and there's these $15 amendments, and it's good. You know, we have people protesting. We'll get to that in a second because I believe in finding a solution to this as opposed to just saying they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. Um, uh, you know, you look at it, here's a great example. I don't know if you heard about this start. Mark Bowser, president of Empowering Enterprises here. Uh, he's a corporate trainer, but they did this in Maine, um, home of Bernie Sanders, right? They, they get, or not Bernie mm-hmm. Sanders. Um, they, they raised their minimum wage from three seventy five an hour last year to, to twelve dollars. Supposed to go up to twelve bucks by twenty twenty four, which um, sounds like a good idea. But as they gradually started raising this in, they wound up repealing that because what happened was the restaurant workers lobbied the state legislature to fix it because they're going, wait a minute, we're, we're making less money, even though we're demanding, because we did pretty well on tips. So they actually, the servers wanted the tips back that they weren't getting yeah. when they are getting paid a flat, flat hourly rate. So uh, they said, look, you know, there's labor activists out there who said, oh, what living wage exposes us to, uh, you know, uh, wage fluctuation and, and um you know, food scarcity and all this stuff. And, and the waiters and waitresses said, look, not, you know what? It's a good system. Um, a lot of people don't agree with it, but you don't work in the industry. We do. We want our tips back. And they've since repealed it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, if, you, if you're a great, a great hostess, a great waiter, a great waitress, and you're doing a superb job, people will reward you for that. And they will give you a good tip. Now, I'd imagine... And I'm not putting you on the spot here, Scott, but I imagine your tip wasn't as high at that Denny's as it would have been if it would have been at Denny's here in Cincinnati, just because of the price structure. Well, yeah, I would think if I'm bucks. paying 37 bucks and you're getting a flat 15, then you don't need a tip. <laughs> yeah, well, valid point. Right. That's, a valid, that's a valid point. And, and, it's, and again, and, and I'm a little biased as a, as a corporate trainer officer, is that is – that, uh, Somebody does a job as a waiter or a waitress, they deserve more money through that tip because they're bringing more mm-hmm. value. And, and this is where I think I, and this, this is not a new issue, it's just hitting the head here, is where we've gotten caught off track as a country. I mean, they look at the, the Declaration of Independence and says, well, see, it says the pursuit of happiness. We have to, they don't understand what that means. First, it says the pursuit, not the guarantee. The second thing it means is the founders were meaning that. The pursuit of happiness is you have the opportunity to be all that you can be, to go for the job that you want to go for. And so my whole, my whole thing is how do you begin to fix this is you begin to fix this by bringing more value to the marketplace. You learn more skills. If you have $10 an hour skills, you're going to get $10 an hour wage. If you have $100,000 a year skills, you're going to bring that $100,000 back into your nest at home. It's, it's just like the farmer. If the farmer does not plant his seed in the spring, he has no right to grouse and complain about not getting a harvest in the fall. Makes, but if he plants makes sense. Seed, makes sense. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 
it's what value you bring. It's, it's how the marketplace works. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's true. Now, now, let, let me do it because there are people, let's say, sure. uh, largely through fault of their own because they didn't pay attention in school. But sometimes bad things happen to good people, and, and I have a lot of empathy for those. I, I you know, it, it behooves us to make sure everyone who's capable, willing, and well, I shouldn't say willing, but everyone who's capable and able of we- working. Uh, you know, work. I- exactly. We have a huge wage disparity in this country. We have uh, the uppers. We have the lowers. Some of the middle, middle is evaporating before our eyes if it hasn't already. Um, and, and I'm about being fair. But also, I think, as you said, you have to bring value to the equation. What is the value of your labor? It's not what the world you think the world owes you in some arbitrary number. But how do we close that wage disparity that really is holding back America? That's the thing. We're a consumer economy, as you know, Mark Bowser. Uh, most of our economy is dependent about me and you buying stuff, whether it's a $37 breakfast at Denny's, a pair of shoes, a car wash, whatever it is. Uh, how do we get more Americans engaged in the system? I think it's, first of all, a want to be in part of the system. Right now, we have a, uh, I don't want to say a generation, but a lot of people who are basically saying, give me, give me, give me something for nothing. It doesn't work that way. I'm all for taking care of the people who can't take care of themselves. Absolutely. That's what that's what that's our fine. ministries are I'm for. Good with that, yeah. That's, yeah, I'm good with that too. Is but what we're taking do what we're doing right now is we're taking care of people like you mentioned who can take care of themselves, the, the able body. And, and what has to happen is we have to get back to how the marketplace works and bringing that value to that marketplace by learning the skills. So people need to look at okay, what is happening to them? What is their desire in terms of? job and so forth and figure out, okay, what skills do I need? Maybe I didn't have the opportunities. Maybe I didn't go to college. Maybe I had a bad upbringing, but what do you need today? We have libraries all over the place that give you the knowledge. Abraham Lincoln didn't have the opportunities either, but he self-educated himself. And is it easy? Because I know there's people probably out there listening to me thinking I'm nuts. No, it's not easy. It never has been easy. It's called work. And work is what creates success. Well, what do you say, Mark, to people, for example, which is a large portion of America, the working poor? You have a husband and wife, you have a family. They're both working a job. Maybe uh, a husband and wife, maybe both of them have a part-time job. Or maybe it, it's the reality that re- uh, employers, because of health care, for example, uh, are reluctant to make their employees full-time. You have to work a multitude of part-time jobs with no benefits in order to keep your head above water. Then, God forbid, you have a medical uh, situation, which uh, get to a certain age and you will, that that sets you back even more. What, what do you say to people like that, though? Because those are the people I'm worried about. I, I get that there are individuals who don't want to work. There's a poor work ethic. They think they should get $15 an hour for just, just showing up. I, I, I disagree with that. But there is a sizable number of Americans who are working their asses off and are not getting farther ahead. As a matter of fact, they're falling further behind. What about them? What can we do to fix that? Well, that's where our, our insurance system, which is a mess right now, which obviously Congress is kind of debating it. <laughs> they're kind yeah. of ignoring it is that's why we have to come up with a system. Obviously, Obamacare didn't work. We found that out. It, uh, the insurance companies are bailing out of that like anything. So we have to come up with a new system that will be that umbrella to take care of the people who can't take care of themselves at that moment. But that's a temporary situation, we hope. The hope is that you lift the person up who's in despair or the family who's struggling. You lift them up so they can have the pride of ownership themselves and be able to get on their own two feet and fly. And that's what we have to do. Instead of becoming the wings for somebody forever, we become the wings to help them fly and then teach them how to fly without the safety net. And, and that's what we're not doing. We don't have a system that is, is covering those gaps, and we don't have a system or a motivation to actually go out there and help people get the skills they need. Yeah. Now, I know that there are a lot of organizations that who are going out there giving skills, and those are awesome, but we need more of them is what I say. We need more people helping people as mentors, as coaches, to help them pick up themselves to have that pursuit of happiness, as Jefferson said. And that's what he was talking about. And we're not talking about not being compassionate. We're not talking about not helping people in need. We're talking about helping everybody be lifted up. And that's the key. And then when that happens, the marketplace is better, too. Yeah, I I agree with you. Streamline the system. um, Make the jobs accessible. Get people the training. There's a a gap, though, uh, between the jobs that we need 
filled and the skills that people have. And, and that's really what has to change. And I think it's also incumbent on the individual as well as communities to facilitate that change. His name is Mark Bowser. He's uh, just up the road here, president of Empowering Enterprises, a corporate trainer. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Mark. Have a great day. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, you the too. solution is not simply, as he said, I thought he put it really well, is like, you know, he, he, uh, here's what I need to to live on. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's what your skill set pays, uh, and it's up to you to make up the difference, whether it's more education or more work. And it sounds cruel and harsh, but that's the that that's the economy, right? That's the way it's always worked. Uh, we've got to do something about that that job gap, that skills gap, as well as that healthcare gap too. Those are the two big things holding us back right now. It's ten minutes away from news. Scott Sloan on seven hundred.